Bain Farm fans. Well, based on the status of the hay and windrows, you can tell what we're doing. We're raking hay. Um, so what's behind us? Well, when we make the turn, we will find out. Holy cow, here we go. Well, there's a rake. It still looks like a bar rake. Hey, there's two bar rakes. Uh, what in the world is that mess behind us? Well, let's get off and take a quick peek, see. I guess we'll do this in peace and quiet. We'll shut off the tractor and take a look. And I found the golden gem of old-fashioned haymaking. A New Holland 260 bar rake. It's a right hand delivery and a low profile rake hitch. Um, well, it works. It pulls both of them. Obviously, the big overarchers are nice for folding together, but usually that would be so long, and to deal with that raking hay in some of these small fields would be a challenge. So, yes, like I said in the last video about uh, the small ball hay making, it's got its uh, brown spots of rust, but guess what? New paint. That's the easiest new paint. Oh, I had to put a dolly wheel on it. Yes, I bought this contraption as a 260 and a 258, and these rakes didn't have dollies on them. So I tracked down dollies and some new parts, rebuilt the gearbox, pretty much put new bearings in most of the ends of the bars. This rake and the 258 pretty much have been worn out twice at least, and I put a bunch of new parts in them this spring, or in between rains, back in early summer, June, we'll say. I'm still using the old 256 because I haven't gotten to putting the parts on the 258 yet. So we're using the trusty, rusty old 256. It's doing great. And actually it's nice because the 260 is wider, this one's narrower, and if I'm trying to actually rake full width, I can make some fat windrows. Um, we'll see what happens come second cutting, whether I stick with this or try to find a different, or modify this double hitch so I can pull two left-handers. I just gotta get all those parts put on the 258. So yes, I had put new pivot points, new dolly. I think I went over this. You can't see that I rebuilt the gearbox. Other than I tried to seal up around the lever that turns it on and off somewhat, because that's how water got in. It was full of water. Yeehaw. And when I do the 258, I'll, I'll already know how to replace the bearings. I got that all figured out. That's a real challenge to do, to put those in. The bearings aren't hard. It's getting the bars back on the star. Um... So you, we've got some old rusty rims, and guess what? The tires hold air, and you know what? It still rakes hay, still puts it in a windrow, and shiny new paint wouldn't do it any better. And besides, this costs a whole lot less than a big double V rake or whatever. We're lifting up the hay, fluffing it, putting it into a windrow. We're not rolling wheels across the ground, scratching up dust. Less ash. I had uh, a customer tell me this year when I delivered hay, but the hay I delivered to her was incredibly less dusty than the, I don't know, probably alfalfa orchard grass that was delivered to the horse barn she works at. I mean, I know alfalfa might be a little dusty just because I think it's got more hairs on its leaves, so maybe that's it. We'll say that's that kind of dust and not the ash out of the ground, but I'll guarantee they probably used a wheel rake scraping up that dirt. Eh, these tires are starting to get worn. I've covered some miles with this rake, unfortunately, because everything's on the road. There's negative tongue weight on the double rake hitch. I really wanted the other style low profile, and it's set up like an L, so you pull one up here and one behind it. And I think that hitch can actually be flipped over, depending upon how you want to pull your rakes. But that would give me the offset I would need to pull two lefties to rake a lot of hay together for second cut, because second cut's usually much thinner than the first. So I guess I rambled on. I got these for a steal of a deal, the two rakes and the hitch for 2,500, but I also put almost that much in parts in them uh, to get them up to my state of functionality. Now, I'm, I'm, and the paint's not shiny enough for all of you, but you know what? Too bad, it'll work. 
I would like it to look shiny, but I also want it to function and go to the field and not worry about anything. So it's got the new parts that it needs. Finishing up that lovely field, you saw me introduce the rake. They're nice, even windrows. I mean, we can only see the three that are left. Uh, and I tried something new. If we look down, they're at the very front of the wagon. But I wouldn't have to necessarily do this yet. I put a layer of bales on the bed of the wagon first instead of stacking from the deck I decided to try something new we'll see how we like it I mean I seem I like it it's a little softer footing I think you gotta watch out for is you really gotta be mindful of where the spaces are between the bales but really it's not bad and that way it's easier to stack seven high like it's easy to stack five all day six is okay but seven's hard to reach from the deck and sometimes I stair step it at the very beginning to get up there. Then I keep doing this, the chute's high enough to get over, and then when they, if they get ahead of me, they don't flop. They just kind of land nicely and give me a few seconds to grab them. Because I always like stacking them knots up. I don't know why, I don't like putting them knots down. And when they flop over, they go knots down. I could have put you on my head, but I've been enjoying the hat all day and the long sleeves and what I call my safari shirt. So I imagine they would wear something lightweight. 
this is some sort of fake blend. But I got tired of being baked in the 90 whatever plus degree heat after raking and mowing yesterday. And really it's not that bad. As long as there's some air movement, which there is a little bit. But you'd be surprised being in the shade. A cool sweat is better than a hot sweat and being baked. Two windrows left. A wee bit of a tight turn coming into this last one. Only a wee bit. I think we'll make it just fine. As long as we straighten out now, which we are. About, I don't know how many bales of windrow. I'm not gonna need to use up this whole front space as usual. The other wagon has 169 bales. And this one will not. We'll still make over 300, which is fairly typical for this field. So I'm happy with how you like the uniform. You don't, you don't see big wads or nothing in it. It's great, the bales come out great. Uh, I forget my exact length. I wanna say it's probably like 34 inches or so. It'd be pretty good for an accumulator or something. It's not a full 36. Every once in a while I get one that's a little long and it's a pain when you're doing 36 inch bales and then one comes out longer, you got a 40 inch bale. Yeah, that's a pain to deal with. So we'll go ahead and call this a fun farming video. Again, on top of the tedding, or raking actually, and we'll catch you guys later.